So shifting from our role as wife, as spouses, we're going to shift to our role as servants, which is something that is universal for all of us with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have Dr. Sheikha Haifa Yunus, who will be leading that part, who is our resident female scholar at ICOI. <laughs> it's for everyone online, just in case. Yeah, they know. <laughs> <clears throat> Can you all hear me? MashaAllah. Do we have more people in the afternoon or are you just better? MashaAllah. Tabarakallah. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam. Rasulillah. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi. Wa man wa ala. Allahumma alimna ma yanfa'una wa anfa'na bima alimtana. Inna ka sami'u mujibu dua. Allahumma ni a'udhu bika min ilmin la yanfa'a. Wa qalbin la yakhsha. Wa nafsin la tashba'a. Wa dua in la yusma'a. ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي Before I get into the subject I want you to know Allah is the best planner This conference was planned from June سبحان الله And we chose the time and look how Allah plans Simply because where is Shaykh Zainab She said this is the only time the only weekend I can travel I said, خلاص. It's actually even before June. I remember it's after Ramadan, if she can remind me. And then we had a lot of debate, should we cancel it or we shouldn't? Are we having a conference and we are very insensitive? Is it the time now to talk about the role of the woman? Or it is the time to learn and get closer to Allah, so we change and we serve. And we had literally a lot of debates about that. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Allah made it happen. And now look at all of you. Yes, we talked about wife. Yes, alhamdulillah, we had fun. We talked about the mother. We talked about the professional. But the end of the day is, and I'm going to ask everybody here, and I want to see hands, who are you? And I don't want to name. I don't want to hear mother. I want to hear physician. Who are you in the sight of Allah? Just a second before you claim I want you really to think of this. And don't answer me. May Allah make me uh, better. When I, we have another one. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, alhamdulillah, much better. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is looking at each one of you now, and of course looking at me, what is he saying about you? What definition he will define you? Mother, wife, professional, servant of Allah, really? So the first thing is I need to know who am I? Where am I in the journey with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Or I'm going to add, or a question. Do you have a journey with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? or we are so immersed in our, as I call it, daily rat race. Meaning, when I go to bed, because we need practical, when I go to bed in the night, exhausted, and everything you did is halal, alhamdulillah. I'm not talking about anything not pleasing to Allah. But have you put your head, when you put your head on that pillow, and says, Ya Allah, lak alhamd, you help me to be a good wife a good mother. I did well at jo in my job. I prayed for the people of Gaza. Is Allah in your daily life? When you say, I'm the servant of Allah, kullana ibadullah. Of course we are. But are we really the servant of Allah? Meaning, and I ask this myself before anyone, when I'm walking in that street, yes, I'm wearing my hijab, alhamdulillah, I'm an obvious Muslim. Am I really internally different than this person next to me in line in the grocery shop who doesn't know anything about Islam. She knows there is God, but doesn't know anything about Islam. Are you all with me? So the servant of Allah is not a word, it is not a claim. I use this word all the time with me because it's so easy to claim. If I do a survey right now between the mothers, without names, every one of you will say, I did my best with my children. 
Only Allah knows. And the result is not the, the test or the re result of the test. So what is a servant of Allah? True servant of Allah, which means if I know at this moment, and Allah is my witness, if I know next to my name, he put the servant of Allah, I'm going to tell him, take me right away before things change. Because then that's it. That's it. Ni'm al abd innahu awab. What a servant he is. Allah describes Sayyidina Ayyub. What a servant he is turns to Allah all the way. So I'm going to take you back to the seerah. And I'm going to tell you how Allah described in the Quran the real servant of Allah. It's seven criteria. Seven. All of us are either the seven one, the last one, is every woman in this room. Because there is option. It's the first six. So it is the verse in Surah At-Tahreem. But before I tell you the verse, I'm going to take you through the reason. You always have to know, why did Allah say this? And I'm not questioning his wisdom. I'm asking, what are you teaching me, Allah? So the story short, the wives of Rasulullah were women like you and me. They had emotions. They loved the Rasulullah And do you blame them? And they were very jealous from each other. So there is many, many narration, who was who, the most agreed or the most probably Allahu Alam correct. It was a Sayyidah Aisha and a Sayyidah Hafsa together against a Sayyidah Zainab bin Jahsh. Listen, because this is a big lesson to every one of us. Don't let us go to the superficial. Superficial is an incident. It's like when you leave today, it's a conference. How many conferences we have been? But what did the conference do to you? Next year you will say, oh, that conference I attended and it changed my mind, changed my life. So this story is as simple as this. Rasul they were jealous. Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam, they, they both of them, Sayyidah Hafsa and Sayyidah Aisha, they said he stayed too long in the house of Sayyidah Zainab. So if he's going to come, when he comes out, if whoever he's going to go to first, tell him that you smell a bad smell from his mouth. It turned to be Sayyidah, the most probably, Sayyidah Hafsa, the daughter of Sayyidina Umar. Sawamatun qawwama. This is how they describe her. You know what sawama? Always fasting. Qawwama, always up in, night, in the night. So he came to her, and he was greeting her, and she says, oh, I smell something not good. Maghafir, they call it in the Arabi, which is a, not a good smell. What did you eat? He said, I just had honey in the house of, of uh, Sayyidah Zainab. He says, nah, maybe that honey was not the best. Wait, wait, because if you're going to, again, if you're going to look superficial, you're not going to get the, the message that we all need to leave today with. So she, and then he went to Sayyidah Aisha. Sayyidah Aisha was the second. And she said exactly the same. He told Sayyidah Hafsa, don't tell anyone that I ate honey in the house of Zainab. She went and told Sayyidah Aisha. Now, Rasul was unhappy. He decided to divorce them. And there is a story he probably did not. And you're talking about who? the daughter of Sayyidina Umar, and Sayyidina Aisha, the daughter of Sayyidina Abu Bakr. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this. When he decided, he was contemplating on divorcing them. Allah was telling him, it's your choice. He didn't tell him, don't. He said, Asa Rabbuhu, in talaqakunna, ayyubdilahu. If he decided to divorce you, Allah will replace them. You're talking about whom? Sayyida Aisha and Sayyida Hafsa, not you and me. If he decide he, he wants to divorce them, Allah will replace him with khayran min kunna, better than you. Ya Allah, better than the mothers of the believers? And now he described 
the following is the servant of Allah. أَيُبْدِلَهُ أَزْوَاجًا خَيْرًا مِنْ كُنَّ مُسْلِمَاتٍ مُؤْمِنَاتٍ قَانِتَاتٍ تَائِبَاتٍ عَابِدَاتٍ سَائِحَاتٍ تَيِّبَاتٍ وَأَبْكَارًا I'll translate. You don't want them? Leave them. I will, I, Allah, will replace them or replace you with the following. This is the criteria. Muslimat. You're going to say, well, that's me. I'll come to it in a second. I may go a little bit over if you allow me. Muslimat. Okay, fine. I know. I'll come to it. Mu'minat. Believer. We are all, right? Sure. Okay. Two checks. Alhamdulillah. Qanitatin. Now I have to say obedient. Because that's obedient to Allah. Al-Qanita or Al-Qanit is the person who's obedient to Allah. But listen to this. Obedient to Allah without if and but. Without I don't like it. It's not fair. I live in the States. It's 2023. I'm not ready yet. All the list, the laundry list of excuses. Qanitatin. Ta'ibatin is the one that really hits me. Those who repent. What does that mean? What does that mean? Come on, I'm, here, I'm asking you. That means they sin. No one is perfect. When do you return? When do you return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? When do you ask for forgiveness? Tawbah is return to Allah. When do you do that? When you are away. Or when you disobeyed him. Ta'ibatin. Now you follow it. The, the sequence is not just because. You return to Allah and then abidatin, you are in constant worship. The only one that we don't have a choice, and each one of us in this room can be one of them, is tayyibatin wa abkara. And there is a beautiful Arabic beauty, I'll share it in a second. They can be virgin or they can have been married before. So the Allah is telling the Rasul, it doesn't matter, because Sayyidah Aisha was virgin. And she used always to say, I'm the only one that he married. That I was, Allah says, fine, we'll replace you with a virgin. Thayyibat, meaning she has been married before. Tayyib, Sayyidah Hafsa. Now, are you, are you those? Do you have these six? How many of you say yes? Show me hands. Alhamdulillah. What is a Muslima? Muslima is not the one in this context. And most of the meaning of Islam in the Quran is not the or the Islam in the Hadith Jibreel, the five pillars of Islam. The five pillars will qualify you to be buried in a Muslim cemetery and they will pray on you and me. But in the sight of Allah, it's the beginning. Al Muslim, woman, Ahsanu Dinam, Mimman, Aslama, Wajahu Lillah, Wahua Muhsin, Wattaba Millata Ibrahim Hanifa, the real Muslim. The person who submit to Allah. He wants me to be in a difficult marriage. I am not going to argue, but you're going to take me through it. Or you're going to guide me to get divorced. Did you see the way? You're not going to live in misery, because he doesn't want that. But I'm not going to do it unless he tells me. I am not going to apply to this college or that college, although I qualify forever, unless he tells me. Somebody one day asked me this question, straightforward, said, how do you know? And my answer was, when you beg him, he will tell you. If you are really connected, he will tell you. How many Muslims are in this room? Did you see my point? Is you submit to his will. You, exactly, Asa and takrahu shay'an, you may dislike something, and there's a lot of goodness in it. Then you are a Muslim. The moment you start arguing, and we are especially unfortunately in this day and age, everything is why I'm not convinced, why me, show me. The only word I take these days is why me, I turn and add a letter to it. Why not me, a woman of Gaza? Why you and me living in this comfort now, and they are bombs on their head, and they are the real Muslimah. 
as we shared in the morning, and you show us the beautiful picture. She said one and two and three all for Palestine. That's the Muslima. Mu'mina, mu'minat. And you say, what is the difference? Huge, huge. Not, I'm not talking about the six pillars of Iman. Of course, otherwise I'm not. You really believe, you really believe with not a single doubt that he already have decreed you are sitting here at, three, at 2.32 in Irvine because he had decreed it upon you, not because you went and bought ticket or you called somebody. You believe, Yaqeen, that's what we are seeing in the women of Gaza. When I look at them, I see the real faith. The real faith, because the real faith comes in the first time when you're hit, in the first time when something happens to you, not later on. Your immediate reaction tells you who you are with Allah. If you say, Qaddar Allah wa ma sha'a fa'an, Allah decree, and whatever Allah decree will happen, you're a believer. If I have to remind you, you're a believer, but you're a second, not a first. Muslimatin, mu'minatin. So I submit to Allah, I believe in him, then I am fully obedient. And pay attention, he didn't say or. He didn't say or. When he talked about virgin versus not, he said or. But this one is not or. This is all the criteria. You cannot pick and choose. Today I'm a Muslim because I'm in the masjid. Tomorrow I am not because I'm going to college or I am at work. My husband got me upset. I'm not a Muslim. Well, he gave me a gift and now I'm a Muslim. It doesn't work this way. 24 hours. Muslimatin, mu'minatin, qanitatin. Learn to be obedient to Allah. It is so hard for us, especially women, true or false. We by nature, and I am not, I'm not feminist or against feminist. I'm feminist when it comes what pleases Allah. And I'm against feminist if it doesn't please Allah. But by nature, we are rebellion. Actually, scholars say this is one of the reasons that hadith, Allah have said it, about the intimate relationship. Because women by nature, like women by nature are givers, by nature, you, you get up at 3 a.m. and the baby is crying and the husband doesn't, not because you are better. That's how he put in you. And by nature, we are rebellion. That's why the qanitat were more in the Quran about women than men. The only men was described qanit, who was he? In the Quran, Sayyidina Ibrahim, qanit. And who are the women? Sayyida Maryam. Are you qanita? You know when you say about somebody qanit? You're at 4 a.m. in the morning, in your corner, facing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sobbing and crying, standing up, praying for the people of Gaza, praying for your children, but praying for your relationship with Allah. Ya Allah, love me. Ya Allah, make me the one that you look at her and says, what a servant of mine. Are you? Doesn't matter you're a wife, doesn't matter you're a daughter, doesn't matter you're a professional, doesn't matter you're single, doesn't matter you, doesn't, you don't have children, it doesn't matter. He didn't say anything about children. Did you see the verse? Nothing about husband, nothing about career. It's all about you and him. Ta'ibatin, how many of you did not wake up for Fajr or missed her salah and sobbed and cried and says, Ya Allah, please forgive me, versus, okay, I mean, we all miss salah. And then when you sin and turn to Allah, show me the better. Follow sins by good deeds. Then the sins will be erased. That's hadith of Rasul hasan and treat people with good manners. And then sa'ihatin. So interesting, Hadi. Hatta when you read it, there is a long mud in it. Sa'ihatin. Man hiya sa'iha. In the Arabic language, those of you who know Arabic, you think it's the traveler, right? Siyaha is you travel. But who is she? The, 
the woman is in constant state of fasting. Fasting. And you really need to take a break and look him back and say, why did he say sa'ihat? And why didn't he say something else? Why didn't he say wear hijab? Why didn't he say mu'tamira? Why sa'ihat? She's in constant state of fasting. Why? How much you know your Quran, ladies? Huh? It's not only stay away from sins. Fasting control you. It's the only ibadah that control you, the nafs. You want this coffee. You want that tea. You want that water. You want that lunch. You want to go with your friends. No, I'm fasting. And especially when it is not Ramadan, when you're the only one and no one knows. That's the servant of Allah. If you put 10 in each one of this, or the one I just shared with you, what's your score will be? What's your score will be? If you are a real Muslim, a real Mu'mina, a real Qanita, Ta'iba, Abida, Sa'iha, you will be the best wife, you will be the best mother, and you will be the best one in your profession, and you will be the best daughter. The problem is, our relationship with Allah needs a lot of work. A lot of work, and we think we are fine. Everybody think, what's wrong with me? Alhamdulillah. So let's change. Let's put the goal, put the goal that I really want to be the servant of Allah. If it's Sayyidah Aisha and Sayyidah Hafsa, Allah said there is better than you, I have a long work. But let's start. Let him see the truthfulness in you, each one of you, young before the not very young. Because the earlier you change, the life is much easier and the struggle is much easier. Start the process today before tomorrow. Why did Allah make me or he's making you and me see this constant, non-stop reels and videos and shorts about Gaza. Why? So I say, Ya Allah, I'm sad and I cry? Really? That's it? What does he want from me? Change. Exactly. Change. Change. Start. Step by step. One by one. You change your children. Change. Exactly what you said. Lead by example, walk the talk, as we always say. So, Asa Rabbu, and I always say, Ya Allah, make me from among those. The verse that we started the, the uh, today conference with is actually a verse where the men and women exactly the same. It was a question Um Salama most probably asked the Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam. said, Ya Rasulullah, everything in the Quran is for the women, for the men. What I'm gonna, where are we going to get? She's not feminist. She is a woman focused on her akhirah. She didn't say how much, why do you pay them that much and you don't pay me? She said all the rewards in the Quran is for the men. What about us? Allah revealed this verse. And it's exactly almost the same sequence, a little bit more detail. So be the Muslimah, the one who submit to Allah day and night. That's what you want, I'll do it. Show me, I'm doing it. I don't care I like it, I don't care I don't like it, I don't care everybody does it, I don't care nobody does it. Muslim, Mu'mina, Faith, Yaqeen, the woman of Gaza. That you know Allah will never let you down. That you know whatever comes to you is khair, May, even if I'm not seeing it. That faith in you. That faith in you. If everybody is making you scared. Don't be afraid from people. You're a believer. You're connected with the one who's strong. You're strong. That's the believer. Not the believer who comes here, wear hijab, prays upstairs there, and then leave and nothing changed. Alhamdulillah, I'm not belittling this. We all are. But there is way more way more, and we need to work on it before it is too late. قَالَ رَبِّ ارْجِعُونَ لَعَلِّي أَعْمَلُ صَالِحًا فِيمَا تَرَكْتِ كَلَّا 
إنها كلمة هو قائلها ومن ورائهم برزخ إلى يوم يبعثون before a day when I'm going to tell Allah Ya Allah please send me back I'm going to do good and he will say no nay it's a word from the tip of the tongue and you're not going to go back you're going to stay in the barzakh let's all make today November 18 the day that Allah blessed this masjid to have this beautiful comp company this beautiful woman and all this knowledge from the morning to evening a day of change may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make everything that the woman of Gaza going through is a reason not only for Megan to become a Muslim, but we become real Muslims. We become real Muslims that Allah is proud of us. That the woman of Gaza, who lost all her family, when they tell her the woman in America, when they saw their video, they are all closer to Allah. What do you think she will say? Right? So let's be the tool for the change and the one that we start the change. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala respond to all our dua. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us better. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the path for getting better easy. May Allah lift all this atrocity and suffering that we are seeing. And may Allah make us all keys, keys for khair and keys for jannah, ya Rabbi Ameen. Jazakumullahu khairan. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. أستغفرك وأتوب إليه صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه تسليما كثيرا